Hi, I'm Paul Girata from Catalyst Resources. Catalyst works with companies around the globe providing UI design and engineering for complex software. We have a specific practice in financial services and many of the users in financial software have a particular demand for significant visualization of data. Over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to share eight different principles with you about using visualization within financial software. Using real world mental models. When the software resembles some real-world item, people can call on a significant amount of previously mastered expertise. Whether that real-world item is a, a trade ticket or an invoice or a credit card statement, once they recognize that it is about that, that particular item, there could be years and years of previous experience and expertise that immediately comes to bear. Now, and what you're seeing right now is a trading turret, which is a significant a complex phone system that's on the desk of most traders and it provides point-to-point -point access to traders all across the globe. Now in this case the original software to program each of the traders phones a an Excel spreadsheet had to be uploaded into a machine by a technician that came on site. Not very practical and when you're looking at this spreadsheet very hard to tell what's going on. When we redesigned it a web-based application that could be used anywhere allowed people provisioning the software to go into an area, select a group of traders for that particular group, select a trader, and then right in front of them is the exact faceplate of the phone system that they have. On the right-hand side, they could pull the various lines that are available over and put, place them on the button, annotate them, and effectively they could sit there and lay out the phone exactly like the trader wanted it. And in fact, they could have the trader sitting right next to them, and the trader would know exactly how they wanted to have that laid out. In the financial services area, you get tons and tons of data. Being able to prioritize and summarize it is critical. You can use visualization to highlight certain pieces of information, bring it to the forefront, and then you can also use the combination of visualization and numerical presentation in different formats in order to highlight it for people and help them understand how to emphasize it. All people comprehend information in different learning styles. Some people are auditory learners, some people are visual learners, some people are kinesthetic, some people are mathematical. Software that doesn't cater to those different modalities is harder for people to understand. Now, this is a piece of software that's obviously uh, very useful if you are a person or very effective if you're a person who's primarily a textual learner. You can read through this, you could comprehend it, and then you could do the mathematics to place the uh, uh, desired order. Now, uh, interestingly enough, this piece of software was used to manage about 10% of the U.S. gasoline supply, ordering and distribution of it. And it was used by highly, highly trained and skilled people. Now, when we redesigned it, we deliberately applied this idea of providing information in multiple modalities. The alerts up on the top right provided an auditory signal directing the user to a particular tank. The visual chart at the top gave them a quick snapshot where they could see the level of the fuel in the tank. Down below were the mathematics and the details so people could see the information. And what we did is we highlighted in the white six white areas exactly what areas should be addressed. Now, what this allowed us to do is to make it much easier for a broader range of people with different, different comprehension styles to use the software. We also simplified the ordering process using visualization and the ordering proce process changed and instead of entering a lot of information, a person could just grab that dot, move it to the exact level that they wanted. It automatically generated the information. Now one other thing to note here in the lower right hand side is that we use visualization to provide some very important information when you're planning distribution and shipment of fuel and that is what the, what's the weather like. If it's Hurricane Katrina or Sandy, you need to be very clear of whether it's safe to send fuel into an area where people might significantly need it or where it's not safe to do that. And this helps them understand it and gives them a quick snapshot of it. Drill down to a single source of truth. Financial people want to see the visual information. They almost always then follow up and say, yeah, I'd like to drill down a little bit. Here's an example of that. In this case, you're looking at a piece of software that manages all the credit card products for Barclays. 
for each product line there are different products you can drill down on a product and see some detail in the list on the left and then you could drill down one more level to the detailed record or the single source of truth about that this pattern is fairly common and useful across all kinds of situations where you've got visualization communicating new approaches a lot of times in financial in the financial world things are done differently to provide competitive advantage they take a different approach in this case we use visualization to model how American Express could identify the spending opportunities for existing customers among their peers and this was a way to visualize who how people were spending against their peers so the small dot was the particular um, cardholder the larger dot was the spending for that category it gave them a very quick understanding of where the opportunities were design for perceived and real-time performance in financial services lots of times you have real-time needs sometimes not all of it is a real-time requirement and this piece of software which is for for tracking bank security um, issues and events like documents being downloaded or a, or a computer being put on the network an unauthorized computer or USB drives the portion in the right hand side needed to be absolutely be real time the rest of the screen needed to refresh at a reasonable rate but didn't have to be uh, real time allow users to decide what's important almost all financial people will ask you to tailor things to certain ways the nice way to do it, the clean way to do it so that you don't have to change your code is you give them a broad set of visual elements and let them decide which ones they want. They could then decide which ones make the most sense for them and filter it down. Using lenses to navigate hierarchies. Most financial data is in hierarchies and what people often want to do is they want to see the same thing at various levels of the hierarchy or use lenses to do that. Here's an example where you've got a set of uh, wealth advisors in organizations and their investors and you want to drill down and see the different performance in those organizations so this is just eight principles that you could use for the visualization of data and financial services I hope this has been helpful thanks for listening